What's up guys, welcome back to another Paladins video. The OB41 patch notes are out. There's actually quite a bit of stuff here, and there's also a lot of really nice buffs and no nerfs at all. I like it. Really nothing in the game needs to be nerfed, so there's no real point in nerfing anything. It's good to finally see multiple characters getting the love they deserve. Anyway, let's go ahead and start off with the general changes first. There's a lot of bug fixes, so I'm just going to leave those out and go over the more important stuff. The Legendary and Epic Founders packs will no longer be available with this patch. These packs haven't really been out that long and they were recently 50% off. They both have some really great value with them. I'm not exactly sure why they're getting rid of them. Maybe they weren't really selling as much as they hoped. Next up is Weekly Quests. They're of course available to complete each week. According to the PTS, you can get 200 crystals for completing two of them. I like that especially when you take into account how you're supposed to get the genie skin for Ying. Now we have some changes to the siege mode. Teams will now gain 300 credits for capturing an objective and teams will no longer gain credits for defending a payload push. There was already a pretty big emphasis on capturing the objective since it's you know the way you win, but this just takes that up a notch. Get on the point guys. There are also changes to the payload mode. Starting credits will now be boosted up to 1000 before they were 400. This really helps balance out the fact that your items get reset when the round ends in this mode. This way you can actually have a few more items by the end of the round like how you would at the end of a siege game. I'm all for it. On top of that, the credit spooling is being increased from 1 to 2 credits every second. May not seem like a lot, but trust me it really adds up. It's nice to see Payload getting some love, it really has taken a back seat to siege. I am going to talk about this one bug fix because this is actually something everyone has been waiting for. Your weapon skins, emotes, sprays will no longer reset to default. This was something that really annoyed everyone. It's a hassle to put them on every time you open up the game and a lot of the time you just forget and go into a game with the basic stuff and that's just no fun. So thank you Hi res for getting that fixed. Alright, so let's talk about Ying for a bit. As you guys know, she's getting a new skin. It's going to be her genie set. This comes with four different heads, one body, two weapons, an MVP pose, and an emote. I was able to get PTS to work, so all of this should be appearing on screen for you guys right now. OB41 is live on the PTS, by the way, if you do want to check it out. Now, this was pretty unexpected. The way you get the 10 items for the genie skin is through the genie chest. This costs 100 crystals a chest, so to get everything, that's 1000 crystals, which is still much cheaper than if you were able to go and individually buy each piece. The problem is, it's all up to RNG. Now, the reason I think they did it like this is because, let's say you spent enough crystals to get everything out of the colossal chest. At that point, every time a new skin comes out, you could just buy more colossal chests for 75 crystals, and you get what's new, guaranteed, and for pretty damn cheap too. So I think they did this this way so they could make a bit more money than if people were to go and use that method. Which I guess is fine. It's a free to play game so they gotta make profits with these microtransactions. And since it seems like you can get 200 crystals from doing weekly quests every week, then they gotta make up for giving out that free currency somehow, right? I don't think this will become the norm because you can't just go and add a new chest with every skin unless they retire old chests and put their contents in the colossal chest, which, you know, it could work. But I really only see them doing this with skin sets that have 10 items like this one does. Moving on to maps, we have another one coming to the game, of course. The siege map Stone Keep is coming out and it looks great. Jaguar Falls and Serpent Beach are getting some performance optimization and a new queue is coming for us. It's called Test Queue. It's a place to feed your maps that are unfinished, allowing players to give active feedback on maps that are in progress. This is available in the casual queue select. You can try out three seed maps, Adrium, District, and Undercity right now with this. I didn't see this coming at all. This is great. Make sure you all try this out and give hi res your feedback. Now in the PTS, this was not a thing, but I imagine when the pad goes live to the live client, this will be a thing. I couldn't really go and click on the option for these three maps in the PTS. Next up is a change to Cauterize. Wasn't expecting this until the Season 1 update, so they're reducing the duration of Cauterize from 2 to 1.5 seconds. Cauterize on different ranks will also no longer stack on each other. The strongest reduction will be the only reduction applied to a single target. 
Cauterize has really been kicking healers down late game when players start to get to tier 2 and tier 3 of it. This helps balance that out a bit. It's still going to be something you're going to want to have on your team without a doubt, but it's just not going to be really really strong like it was before. Now on to character balance, again no nerfs, only buffs. This one is for all supports. Healing now gives ultimate charge, so there's even more of a reason to make sure your teammates are healed. Self-healing and healing done to teammates that heals for zero doesn't provide any though. Now this may make it so healers get alts really really fast. I don't know if, how they balance this out, but uh, I can imagine Maldamba will be throwing out his uh, giant fear snake a lot. So if that tends to be a problem, they'll probably work on that. But yeah, it doesn't really say anywhere here how they like balanced out getting alt charge from healing and your damage. So we'll see. On to more specific buffs, Barrick is getting his health boosted up from 2,900 to 3,400. In OB38, they knocked his health down from 3,000 to 2,900, along with a few other nerfs. They didn't really like how hard it could be to kill him. Making his health lower than Buck, who is a flank, wasn't really the best idea though, so it's good that they're giving him some more. He's a frontline. He needs above average health in order to take damage for his team, especially since his big barrier seems to go down faster than anyone else's. Barrick is one of my favorites and arguably my best, so I'm really happy about this. It isn't a ton of health like the other front lines since he's so much smaller than them, but it's enough in my opinion. Next we have Grok, which is getting a buff to Healing Totem. It will now heal for 520 instead of 340 per second. This is good. Grok is a pretty mediocre healer, so it's nice that he'll be able to put out more healing. I don't think this is really going to make him better than any other healers, because their methods of healing are just so much better than a stationary AoE ability that can be killed and has a reasonably long cooldown. Now on to Sky, and for once, she isn't getting nerfed! I'm actually a bit surprised. They are increasing her ammo count from 15 to 20. This is definitely a good step. Leaves you with a bigger margin for error, so you're not screwed if you miss a few shots. Is this everything she needs? Probably not, but it's most definitely something. Now on to Tyra, and hey guys, they did what I wanted. They buffed her health. It's going from 2,200 to 2,400. This is what she needed. She has no escape, so if she's going to be that character that stands and fights, she needs the health to back it up. This might not be enough. In the future, they may need to add another 200 or so, but it's a good start to test out the waters. And that's it for the balance changes and the patch notes as a whole. It's pretty clear to me that we have a really good patch coming our way. What do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comment section below. And that's pretty much it, guys. I want to thank you all for watching. I very much appreciate it. And I'm going to see you guys later. Bye. Save all the way.